Good morning class and it's a brand new day today. Before we proceed to our new topic, let's play a game named Four Pictures in a Word. Are you familiar with this game? Now, I will show you four different pictures and tell me what are they. I'll give you 30 seconds to answer. The time starts now. Okay, time's up, and the correct answer is ecosystem. Our topic today is about ecosystem. What is ecosystem? An ecosystem is an interaction between plants, animals, and microorganisms and their environment. All things in an ecosystem, living and non-living, work together to be one functional unit. All living organisms in an ecosystem depend on each other for survival. This means these organisms are interdependent. Think of what would happen to the birds that live in the trees in your yard if all the worms in your yard disappeared. Where are ecosystems? Ecosystems are everywhere. They can be as big as the savanna in Africa and ecosystem can even be as small as a garden in your backyard. There are two components of ecosystem. One, a biotic. A parts of an ecosystem that are non-living. Examples, water, soil, light, temperature, and air. Number two, biotic. A parts of an ecosystem that are living examples plants animals humans and microorganisms there are three kinds of interaction in an ecosystem one abiotic abiotic interaction relationship among physical factors in the environment two biotic biotic interaction relationship among biotic factors in the community three biotic abiotic relationship between living and non-living things in a community in a balanced ecosystem all the three major ecological categories of organism producer consumer and the composer must be present even though the composers are needed for the survival of the community because the composers act as a garbage disposer by recycling matter back to the atmosphere producers or the autotrophs organisms that use the energy from the sun to produce their own food. Consumers, heterotrophs, organisms that obtains energy by feeding on other organisms. Decomposers, break down waste and dead organisms and return the raw materials to the ecosystem. Example, bacteria, and fungus. 
there are four classifications of consumers. Herbivores, animals that feed on plants are referred to as primary consumers. Example, cow, deer, rabbits. Carnivores, animals that feed upon other animals are called secondary consumers. Example, humans, cat, dog. Omnivores, animals that eat both plants and animals. Scavengers, organisms that feed on dead organisms. Example, vulture. Energy flow, energy transfer, or food chain. The transfer of energy from the autotrophs to the heterotrophs make a trophic pattern. Energy is transferred from one level to another, starting with a producer to the first level carnivore up to the last consumer. The position of an organism in the sequence is called trophic level. The first tropic level is the population of green plants which produce foods and are called primary producers. All other populations in a community which are dependent on plants are called consumers. Question Are the decomposers nature's recyclers? The answer is yes, while obtaining energy for their own needs. The composer returns simple molecules to the environment. These molecules can be used again by other organisms. Question How does energy flow through the ecosystem? answers in one direction only. The movement of the energy through the ecosystem can be shown in diagram called food chain. Take note. All the energy on earth comes from the sun. Food chain. It is a series of events in which one organism eat another to get energy. Please analyze in 20 seconds. Okay, in this picture, grass placed in the first level. Grass, the producer, synthesizes energy with help from the sun. Then, the grasshopper, an herbivore, receives this energy by eating the grass. Next, the mouse, a carnivore, and secondary consumer eats the grasshopper and receives its energy. Lastly, the owl, another carnivore, receives energy after eating the mouse. The last organism in the food chain is the top predator. The amazing thing is that the grass allows all of the organisms after it in the food chain to survive and get energy. Another example, all food chains begin with green plants or the producers. So, the grass or the producer constitute the first tropic level. The grasshopper, which is the primary consumer that feed on plants, constitute the second tropic level. The carnivore, which is the snake, 
is the secondary consumer. It constitutes the third tropic level. Finally, the large carnivore, which is the hawk, also called the top carnivore or tertiary consumer, form the fourth tropic level. The large carnivore die and form the feed of the decomposer, which is the punjai. The decomposer feed on these dead animals and plants. Food web. Food web is a pattern of food chain that interlocks and forms a network. Food web represent an attempt to describe the numerous alternative food energy pathways in a community, most of whose members have more than one choice of food. Please observe. For instance, plants are eaten by grasshoppers and squirrels. The grasshopper is eaten by the lizard, which is then eaten by the fox. The squirrel can be eaten by a fox or a golden eagle. The squirrel can also be eaten by a snake, which is eaten by the fox. When the fox or eagle die, they are decomposed by earthworms and bacteria. See how it can get confusing? Looking at a food web diagram can really clear things. Remember, there is a transfer of food from one organism to other forming a chain. A food chain represents unidirectional transfer of energy. We have the ecological pyramids. It shows how energy flows through the ecosystem. Energy pyramid shows the amount of energy that moves from one feeding level to another in a food web. Only 10% of the energy is passed into the next level. The most energy is available at the producer level of pyramid. As you move up the pyramid, each level has less energy available than the level below. Okay, that's all for today. Kindly check your Google Classroom for your quiz or activity. Thank you. See you next meeting.